Bolts Nation, welcome to another episode of the Bolts Block Party. I am your host, Greg Wolf, joined by my co-captain, Braden Coburn. And we uh, we had a time to change up the set a little bit here today, Kobe, because we've got a tandem here. We've got the newest guys, the newest additions of our Tampa Bay Lightning. It is very exciting to welcome them here at the Block Party. Anthony Duclair, Matthew Dumba, thank you guys both for taking the time out. I know it's been a very busy day as it is with photo day and, and practice, and you guys got to do something else after this. So we appreciate you taking some time to sit down with us and uh, giving us a little insight uh, as to your journeys, because both of you have a pretty cool journey uh, of how you got here to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And myself and Kobe, we like to kind of delve in uh, on the block party and kind of get a little bit of the history. Both of you guys super involved with initiatives on your own and with the NHL. So we kind of want to delve into that as well. But um, for our fans, obviously we're, we're used to screaming cooch and coop. And now we've got a Duke, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, we want to make sure you guys are distinguishing that on the ice, but What's the nickname for you? I heard him call you Dumbs. Is that like, is that yeah, preferable? I mean, I've been creative enough through my career uh, to really give me a good nickname. It's just I've always, always kind of been Dumbs. Dumbs. Um, yeah, okay. that, that's, that's what sticks. That's all, that's all I got. So maybe the fans can make it start brainstorming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Put, it, I mean, put it in the comments. Okay. You, know, I mean, you see people in warm ups with the signs. So maybe there's some a couple a uh, couple of good ones we can spot over this last uh, five games and through the playoffs. Yeah, we're gonna run. we're gonna have to put look. it out to you guys <laughs> to pick up their nicknames here. So. Credit to Julian Brisebois, our GM, because uh, he just seems to be a, a wizard. At he, knew, this. he knew what he was doing. He, he knew what he was doing, bringing these two guys in. And I don't think there's it's a any coinc, it's it's not a coincidence that this turnaround for this team has coincided with the arrival of these two gentlemen here and what they bring to the table. And I found an interesting fact, uh, Duclair, here about your career. You started in the NHL five points in your first seven games. When you got here, you set a franchise record by scoring points in your first seven games to start your career. Rob DeMeo had five, Corey Conacher four, Kevin uh, Shattenkirk four, seven. So talking about an impact right off the rip and how both of you guys have fit into the system. But what is it about both of you guys that you feel has meshed so well in these first 13 games or so that you've been with the team? <clears throat> I mean, um, Dums and I have been uh, friends for a long time and um, you know, over the years, we always, um, you know, wondered what it would be like to play, uh, you know, together, um, you know, instead of just, you know, hanging out in the summertime and stuff like that. And, um, you know, always wondered what it would be like to be teammates just because, you know, we have the same, you know, we're the same guy, you know, we have the same, um, you know, passion for, for a lot of things off the ice. And, um, you know, it's been pretty cool to, um, you know, be together, be teammates for the first time. And um, I think our chemistry off the ice kind of, you know, bounces off of the other guys. Uh, you can tell, you know, the first game, you know, Dums is obviously a loud vocal guy and uh, you can tell the boys were loving it, you know, right before the game. And uh, you don't see too much of that, especially when you're, you you go in as a new guy in the locker room, you kind of try to stay in your lane, try to be quiet, but, uh, you know, that's not us. That's not Dums, that's for <laughs> sure. Um, you know, he's going right at, at guys and, yeah. um, you know, can try to, you know, fire up the boys. And, uh, and that's just what, you know, we try to bring the locker room and just try to be ourselves. So it's been a it's been a pretty cool and, and smooth transition, I would say, just because the locker room is just, you know, so good. And, and you know, guys are, have been here for a long time. They've won, um, you know, so it's an organization where we can just come in, be ourselves. And, um, you know, everyone's going to, you know, get along. So you mentioned your relationship with each other. When did you guys first meet? When did you guys first start hanging out, become friends? Was it enemies first, uh, friends later? Uh, no, we probably met. Uh, it's probably back when we were younger, probably some hockey Canada stuff in the summer. Um, Duke is a year younger than me. Um, but I think when our friendship kind of took off was, uh, during COVID. And so it was right before it was like the George Floyd incident happened. Uh, I started my initiative in Minnesota to help out Lake street. And, uh, you know, after the wake of all those riots, um, and then that was when our initial talks of um, HDA, the Hockey Diversity Alliance, first started. So we are on the phone um, talking for, you know, three, four hours a day, every day during COVID, um, just on Zoom or uh, FaceTime. So um, got to know each other better then. And it was, it was afterwards in the bubble. We had just done the quarantine, all that stuff, right? And we're like, man, we're both in U.S. cities at the time. Like, yo, are we going back and going to do the 14 days again? Right. We're like, 
have my trainer Tommy, which which you know. Yeah, I know Tommy. Great, he's an awesome guy. Yeah, TP, and he's down in AZ at the time, and he was working out with uh, Keller and uh, uh, Jake Bean and Geeky. Um, had some other guys, um, and he's like, "Yo, you guys should should come down here and see how see how these guys are living. Like, it's all open down here. You guys can work out in the morning and then go right to skate at Ice Den." Um, so I did that for. I was coming down for a week, and then ended up packing up. Uh, going back to Mini, grabbing all my stuff, grab my dog, and then I stayed. Uh, I stayed in AZ for the next uh, three and a half months until we had to come back for that year. And then halfway through, he uh, he decided to come down. So we both rented places only like ten five minutes away from each other. Um, Not roommates. Get, yeah. We, <laughs> could you guys? Uh, no, can't, no, can't do it. No, can't do it. it. Good and friends, it's his fault. Roommates. And it's his fault. He knows it. He's too messy. I'm a clean guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's all over the place. So um, no. Uh, what about what about picking like a spot out to eat? Like who's someone? Usually somebody takes charge, or do you guys a collaboration? Uh, I know you guys. You know what? Usually it's usually it's me. I'm on point on it. But since we've been here, this guy's uh, this guy's. Uh, I take over. Just, I've just been I'll take uh, follow, time. following his lead. Yeah, yeah. So you got some nice. families around the town already? I mean, <laughs> oh my God. there's so many spots. Um, I took him the first here. night, uh, him and his fiance to uh, meat market. Okay. I would go there Back as park. an away player. Yeah. So I, that was just a classic. But, Good spot. Um, you know, here on Water Street, like this like oh, new oh, area, yeah. Yeah, Boulogne yeah. is probably. You yeah, got more experience because you're in the Eastern Conference, right? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. You've been in the Western Conference yeah, exactly. like you're once a year. So. And then the COVID season playing for the Panthers, I feel like I was in Tampa every oh, every weekend. So right. it's like, Second yeah, home. exactly. So I kind of knew Tampa a little bit. But, um, yeah, I, I, I yeah, let's charge. Place armature works. Yes, um, food hall style. Yeah, I thought that place. Was pretty sweet too. Yeah, armature's yeah, a good mean, team, man. Picks up the check. Well, well, pretty even. Well, pretty down. even. Yeah, yeah. Just Back and forth. Never, no. <laughs> we should. We should. Just start, I mean, start yeah, playing yeah. for it, but a couple of good guys. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, John, it goes you're, around, comes you're a big around. You play, right? Are you? Have you gotten into the? I, game? I mean, yo, they play. They play. Um, damn, the French game. Oh, super uh, talk. Super talk, man. It's just, <laughs> it's just it's adult trouble. I, I don't know. And it's only a four man game. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting into super talk. And then other guys are playing chopper in the back. Have you seen that? I have. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that game's wild. <laughs> like, <laughs> what so is it, chopper? It, yeah. It can pop off. It's chopper. been around. It's Marty of St. Louis brought it. Oh, it's, yeah. so it's been around for a long time. E6 chopper. You got to, everyone's playing. It's just like this game. It's that kind of a team, key. like building thing. Uh, no, no, it's it's a it's a high it's a high. It's like uh, a it, it's a high it's stakes a card game. Game, okay. yeah, but you have to like the like, pots accumulate as guys burn. Okay, yeah, but if it's a friendly and when you, you you chop it, then it goes back down to yeah. zero. So like it just keeps growing. Tales right. from the locker room. Yeah, it's I know, not stuff I know. we normally <laughs> get. But. So guys, I want to talk about the hockey diversity. Alliance. Yes, um, I know it's something that's super close to both your guys' hearts. Something you guys are founding members. Um, some of our fans might not know a lot about it. Yeah. Can you guys give us an insight onto what you guys are doing? Yeah, like Dumb said, we started during COVID. And um, <clears throat> so basically it's just nine present and past pl- uh, former players that are on it, on the board. Um, you know, some names that you definitely know, like Wayne Simmons, Trevor Daly, um, you know, Akeem Eliou, Nazim Kadri, you know, us too. Um, you know, it's, uh, all the guys that are involved are very passionate have kind of the same story growing up we're all you know obviously minority minority players that made it to nhl and with that you know we all know how you know hockey is pretty dominant sport uh, white sport and um you know we faced um you know a lot of adversity you know growing up and um for for us i think we're just trying to pave the way for the next generation and um trying to try, obviously eliminate racism in the sport and um you know we hear so many stories year after year from parents uh, coaches and, and stuff like that that you know young kids you know boys and girls are, are quitting hockey because you know they can call the n-word or you know getting mistreated or, or anything like that so um you know uh, it, it's something that's obviously it's very personal to us and it's something that um you know we want to get um, on top of it and, and get in the communities and uh, that's what we've been doing um, you know it's four years now and um, we've already um, impacted over 700 families um, we're doing um, you know free ice time uh, free equipment um, you know travel uh, food all that so and these are the type of you know communities and, and kids that 
wouldn't necessarily even touch the ice ever just because obviously we all know how hockey is an expensive sport so um you know through our sponsors and uh, which they've been unbelievable help these past few years uh we've been being been able to you know gather a lot of money and and, and try to provide those you know for the kids and um it's been awesome so far it's only four years in and um you know just the fact that we have you know this representation guys that play in the league um you know we've, got, we've grown a lot of traction and uh for myself i think 10 15 even 20 years down the line i just can't wait to see how this will this will grow and um how many families will be impacted and um you know we're hoping to obviously get some uh future nhl stars in there but that's not really the main reason the main reason just trying to get there um yeah. trying to get get in get in the sport get on the ice try to enjoy yourselves and just feel at home and um you know from there you know doors can open up yeah, and just, stuff it, like that yeah it's an it's an untapped uh, demographic that you know um not going into uh you know spring bank in calgary you know you're going into you're going into the hood and you're going and uh targeting these these families where it can make a real difference you know just even getting those meals that week is uh can help a family out sure transportation gives uh gives parents an opportunity to know that their their kids are safe um doing doing something that they love uh they're making friends and that gives those parents uh, more time in the day that you know they can help try to provide for for their families. Uh, so it's it's been a really beautiful thing uh, to see come together. And I hope uh, you know we we originally started with a pilot program. Uh, it was just floor hockey. Um, CCM stepped up, gave all the kids sticks, helmets, gloves, um, and now we've transitioned that into ice. And yeah, over seven hundred. I think it's eight hundred and fifty um, kids now. Um, in Toronto, so being able to and take that and see the success that we've had there, it's really it's really encouraging for us because we want to be able to now take that blueprint, and boom, it. drop it Everywhere. in, a, drop it in all the big cities in Canada, throughout North America, um, and you know, then you then you we're talking thousands, hundreds of thousands of kids of that we're helping. So it, it started from us just sharing our own stories and reflecting and looking like, yo, how do I? How do I stand up for my 12-year-old self when I didn't know how to then, when I was just filled with this rage and didn't know where to go with it? And, you know, you're having talks with your parents that, you know, other kids on your team, they, they don't even, they don't have to experience this. They don't have to live it. Sure. And there's, and I know all players of color, I've seen this in the NHL and, and the PR staffs do a great job bringing those kids who are affected by it into the locker room and seeing that representation, you know. Um, Huge. Oh, well, there's awesome in Minnesota. It's guys like Stewie and Greener, uh, JT Brown. I know mm -hmm. he's here too, yep. and Brownie does a lot of great stuff. Um, but for kids to look up to us like that, it's it's so cool. I mean, I mean my favorite players were Jerome and Paul Korea. I didn't even realize that till we started talking about this stuff. I'm like, damn. <laughs> yes, I mean, and you obviously being the uh, you know first becoming one of the first um, Filipino descent players in the National Hockey League. That's kind of setting its own bar. I mean, just in that regard, but for both of you also to be working for the Alliance, didn't you also just um, like uh, groundbreaking on a rink down in Fort Lauderdale, like a synthetic rink um, as part of your foundation? How do the, how does your foundation directly work with the hockey Alliance? I mean, they kind of seem like they go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. And um, we haven't, collabed yet but we will down the sure. line for sure um and boko too right i saw some stuff yeah boko yeah. fighting fans might know yeah boko, boko Imano. Yeah, well yeah, yeah. It was the guy that yeah i was disappointed when he left sure but, <laughs> uh, you know you you do some stuff with him as well Bogo, yeah in your foundation yeah yeah he's 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 one of my best buddies from back home obviously uh from montreal and mm -hmm. um he's been helping me out a lot and um actually started my own foundation um kind of like took the steps from this guy right here yeah. um you know, when I tore my Achilles last year, I had so much time off, and um, the assistant general manager, Brett Peterson, um, of the Florida Panthers, uh, told me that, uh, you know, All-Star Weekend in Florida, um, he had rented this rooftop in Fort Lauderdale. He has the, you know, venue for me. You know, you do what you want type of thing. And I had, and he told me that in August, and this was in February. So, you know, for those, month, those months I was rehabbing, you know, in the morning and then I have the whole day to myself, I was just cooking up, brainstorming, calling my people back home. Um, and then, you know, throughout uh, an awesome event where uh, Vinu Viola, you know, he, uh, the owner of the Panthers, um, gave a pretty, pretty nice check and um, everybody showed up. It was obviously All-Star Weekend, so I invited a lot of people that were already in town. It was awesome. And 
Um, you know, with that, I made a promise to South Florida that I would build, you know, synthetic hockey rinks uh, around around South Florida to, you know, in, in schools and underprivileged schools. And um, that, that was my, my, my first one in, in Lauderdale Lakes, which is like 10, 15 minutes away from Fort Lauderdale. And um, the school is, I would say, you know, more majority black, you know, so, and just to go over there over the, over my bye week, um, went over there and, um, you know, everybody was there. It was awesome event. Um, you know, I think, I think they said it's going to be done by the end of the uh, regular season. I got to check up on it, but, uh, right before playoffs should should be ready to go. And obviously after the season ends, I'm going to go and go ahead and check it out, but that's going to be the first of many. And looking forward to, uh, you know, building some more down here in Florida. Congratulations. You know, like you think about, player's legacy right and I, I know i don't know if you guys think about it at all but you know obviously we're hoping you guys are going to be also stanley cup champions here heck yeah you yeah. know at, at some point but these are the things that really affect other people and you know the claire foundation and then uh dumbs you have hockey without limits yeah yeah uh, I, I, I know it's a huge camp. thing right yeah, yeah i run that camp in minnesota so yeah uh dumbs hockey without limits camp um and yeah kind of passed down the torch to mm-hmm. some of the other guys um it's, it's just crazy. I was reading about it. It's like, you're like, this This is a camp for everyone. You could be blind. You could be deaf. You could be yeah. white. You can be black. You can be, eh, you know, you really have kind of tapped into like, you know, this is this is for everybody. Well, that was, was so cool. Like Minnesota, obviously, big hockey state, a state of hockey. Um, but just the connections I've made through hockey, um, the good people you meet, uh, Darby Henderson, um, he has his foundation, Henderson Foundation. Um, and they do um, all um, uh, special needs hockey, like so blind hockey, uh, sled hockey. So yeah, have those uh, have have them all come out is something crazy, right? And then pile on a um, bunch of other other kids, all you know, black brown kids. We had, I think we had in my last year in Minnesota when we did it, we had three hundred plus kids, Amazing. and. And is outside at this um, uh, the Roseville Center. There's they've got a big oval, and then they have like four sheets in the middle. So I was just like, let's just make this as inclusive to everyone uh, as possible. So bring your sisters, bring your cousins, and they can skate laps. And if you're in the camp, then you're in the middle, and you're running through drills and stuff. And you got all the age groups, and it's a whole day event. Um, Usually you get a little snow. It's just like a perfect day, man. Yeah, and then yeah, all the sponsors too coming out. I, I couldn't have done it without them. And I mean, I really feel it ties in well with with what uh, you know Jay Feaster and the Lightning Made Development Camps and what they've done here. Because again, I mean, I'm representing right now our sled hockey program. But again, I feel like the message, Phil Esposito, you know, Mr. Vinick, it's all been about if you're going to grow the sport, you have to get the balls and sticks into kids' hands. And I don't even know how many hundreds of thousands of sticks and balls that have gotten into kids' hands in this area. Cause, same thing. Like, this is a non-traditional hockey market, but, like, you guys have been here now. You can't walk anywhere and not see a Lightning logo somewhere on somebody's shirt, on a car, on a hat, whatever. It has grown because they have been so entrenched in the community and, like you said, trying to give those that would otherwise not have an opportunity to, to play hockey. And I've been out there many times with the lightning may crew the lightning development crew at these schools like you just said that underprivileged schools and kids that would never have the opportunity so to see them become fans and to 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 want to play the sport and then you guys with your initiatives i just think it's it's amazing to see how the sport is growing um i just kind of want to pivot back to you guys getting traded here you guys are coming from two non-playoff teams you know I, I don't know if you guys were obviously you, d- you never know what's gonna happen at the trade <laughs> deadline did you guys have an idea that this might be trading and like you know duke i'm thinking about you right now like did you think that you're gonna end up on uh you know the wing of kucherov and point <laughs> right you know like a couple weeks after the trade deadline and you know you guys going from you know basically being out of it to really having a legitimate chance uh for a cup ring here yeah i mean i remember um with the sharks, we went down to AZ, and I, we went. I, was, I went straight over to Matt uh, Thompson's place, and we were talking about our year, and um, you know, we were just like just in tough situations, obviously. And 
We're it's just, a tough feeling. Right? It's you a tough feeling. I mean, we're all like, yeah, it's... we're all professionals, and um, you all try try hard, and you know, we're all good guys trying you know try to win games. But you know, it is it is yeah. what it is. You well, know, no it is a situation. The, the but, boys in San Jose, but it was like a month in, and you guys might have been eliminated from the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, right? It was definitely a, a tough tough start to the year. That's for <laughs> sure. But um, no, I, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, when I hired my agent, we were, we were talking for weeks, and um, there was a couple teams that he told me were potentially trying to get me and Tampa was never one of them so um you know it just kind of threw me off guard there when Grizzly gave me a call and, and told me I was going to be traded to Tampa and uh, I was actually very excited uh, I didn't even know that was you know possible especially last three years playing for the Panthers I, I didn't even think about the lightning to be honest but um yeah I was just obviously really grateful grateful for the opportunity and then the next day when I flew to Tampa as soon as I landed my phone just blew up and I was wondering what was going on. And one of the first texts I got was from Akeem Aliou and was saying, I'm here in dumps to Tampa. But this was like two hours prior. He had okay. sent that text. So I'm like, there's no way. Go straight to Twitter. Dumps is uh, coming to Tampa. <laughs> I'm still on the tarmac. I'm still on the plane. Call this guy up right away. It was probably two rings. And this guy answered, probably screaming. And we were just having a good time. I'm like, Dumps, I'll give you a call later. But I was just so excited. It was just one of those feelings where, you know, just it was just meant to be like we talked about it for so many years and how to be, be teammates and um to be teammates not only like just teammates but here for the lightning is right. more way more special you think for sure jbb had any idea that they yeah were... no idea no clue yeah, we because we asked him okay, after the say, first like, game did you know we were in front he's like yeah i had no idea no idea <laughs> like that's <laughs> like i really feel good now like heading into the playoffs like this is like one of those fate moments like this could be like where you look back and it's just like that was the moment that was the key situation that propelled us to getting another stanley cup but you guys had a lot of connections with some other players on this team already right you guys have had teammates uh I hate looking at you because you. I playing against you was a pain in the ass. <laughs> no, it's like I didn't have to worry about you too much in the West, but right. I was so happy when I saw you come here. But um, oh man, <laughs> you were annoying too with your stick. I, 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 I you always admit that I'm not the guy that's blocking all my shots over here, man. The guy that's just fast. You know, I just seen like, it in the oh, summer yeah. skates. <laughs> but um, can move. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I have actually I play with uh, Nick Paul and okay. and Pointer both in World Juniors. I mean, Pointer were actually roommates, World Juniors. And then uh, Paulie, I played with him in Ottawa as yeah. well. And I knew Fleur. He was at the Team Canada camp, something like that. Obviously, Dom's. I uh, played with Joe in Florida, a goalie. Um, played with Cooch in uh, Junior in Quebec. Wow. Um, what else? And then, what's who else? Uh, I don't know for you. I, that's me and Fleur. Me. Fleur was a little 16 when I was in Red Deer. Yeah, yeah, uh, rebels. Like, yeah, my second or third year. Yeah. Um, and then I mean, I'm Duke here. Yeah, that those texts. It was pretty funny because he called me and I, like I was like running around with my head cut off. I, <laughs> I was like, I was like at the U-Haul. Like, hey, uh, <laughs> Duke, you've been traded before, right? Yeah. This isn't your first trade, but it dumps. This was your first trade, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. first one. So it was a uh, it was a weird feeling, but it's it's weird too because we're kind of. If a little bit of a different situation you know we, like we actually started pretty good in the desert and mm -hmm. then it was like coming back for all-star break we saw our schedule and it was it was just stacked with like yeah. top five teams you know and um then we went on that 14 game losing streak and it was uh it was pretty tough well, like, playoffs. oh <laughs> see, yeah see you later so um kind of had an idea that it was going to happen but same as uh same as dookie i i, I didn't know uh tampa was in the mix until until a couple hours before, uh, maybe maybe just an hour before. Yeah, um, yeah. And then but it kind of be a sigh of relief, also knowing that he's here now. Like, as I mean, that doesn't happen often where you know two BFFs like end up with the same yeah. team. But it's like, oh, it yeah. be a little bit of a, a relief to know that you're coming to a new team, but you also got your buddy coming with. Yeah, and it was funny because right when he went to Tampa, I sent him. There's this rap song, Seco P Tampa, <laughs> wavy wavy joint, and. So he's banging it. I'm putting it on in the car, and it was just like, it, it had to have, be for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> had to be Man, for a reason. It happened for yeah. a reason. I truly believe that. So you guys show up. You're in the dressing room. You know what's the message? What's Coach Cooper talking to you guys about? Like, does he say like this is what we're looking for from you guys? Like, this is your role, or, or like he's oh. just saying play your game and we're gonna fill you. Yeah, it's pretty funny because he went like that night. You went out for. Uh, like had a little bite with Coop, you know, yeah. just meet him for his first time. And then I talked to Coop 
later that night and he's like damn i didn't i didn't know you guys were were friends like that he's like i just need you to come in and do your thing we know how you guys play um so don't be nervous about doing that like just be yourself and and you know bring a little energy to this group i was like dude I, we got you <laughs> we got we got that covered so local guy in the locker room i've, I've seen. i mean yeah i mean you just talk some nonsense you know some eventually sticks <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I gave a big intro for uh dookie you know the the dark knight the return of the dark knight <laughs> I'm, I, I'm curious like some guy, sometimes guys you know you look at a guy like cooch you know he's he's laser focused he doesn't say a whole lot um, but I was the same way. I think if the more vocal I was, it gave me energy. It made me focus. Is that kind of part of your thing? I just like, you know, you want to be vocal cause it also helps you prepare for the game. Yeah. hundred percent, man. I, I think like, I, I like coming off the ice and talking about stuff for, you know, dabbing guys up on nice plays. Like you need, you need to get those touches on the back end too. Cause we're not always getting points. So it's the stuff that you, we see that, you know, maybe the average fan doesn't. And, you know, you're, you're picking up the boys or just talking or what kind of situation or time of the game it is. Those are kind of like mental cues for myself too. So like on the bench, I'm like that. And then just in the room, you know, you kind of want to fill those, those gaps, those voids of silence, you know? Sure. Um, I think it's really cool. Like what I noticed in the room is um, we do have like a younger crew outside of the you know guys who won here in the past, but um, seeing like, Eddie and Stammer come in, and then when they do talk, you know, every, everyone listens, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, respect. You draw the famers, right? Like, um, so before that, when, when they're not in the room or whatever, I think that's our time to, you know, step up and, you know, kind of keep it light uh, with the guys and joke around and still, we're still getting prepared and stuff, but uh, a couple jokes here and there, and, and these guys come in and, you know, say their thing and we're ready to go. Also, we come out to tunes here. That's yeah. that's the what, most wild play I've ever. Yeah, had. it's the best. Have ever. you guys hijacked the the iPod yet? On the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. we we took that Thursday. pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little so a little culture in the room. Say, I mean, you guys, hip hop, EDM. Like, what are you guys into? Because I mean, I know there's a lot of variations in that uh, locker room. Hip hop, rap, okay, or, um, Afro beats, okay, Afro beats in the morning. Energy. Well, for, first game day, I came in. And uh, before morning skate, I go to the gym to like warm up and stuff, and it's dead quiet. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. Cheese, give, me the cheese, cheese. Like, Yo, give me the hog. I can't be doing this. Like, quiet, boys? Like, this, you guys have been doing this all year, so no, I just took over the gym, and he took over the locker room. So nice. We got uh, we got both set up. And we're, we're yeah, you know, like rap, though, you need, need something the boys can maybe spit along to, you know, yeah. like some, I, I give them some old M&M, some 50 cents, okay. something that they can. We can you can rap too. These guys, That's I mean, not, rappers, man. They these guys ooze confidence, you know. So you hear these okay. bars, and then all right, let's go, let's go yeah, get not it. Mitchell Chafee or uh, Johansson's. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we know uh, Mikey Asamanta has been uh, they've taken the aux cord away from him. I've heard too because <laughs> they don't seem to like his no. selections as well. No, no. Nah, man. I, I'm thinking like Sorelli's probably like a Taylor Swift guy. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> good thing. That, good yeah. thing Tony doesn't have it. Yeah. Facts, man. Take us back to that first game because both of you, the first time in your in your Lightning sweater, that game you both made impacts right off the rip. You got points. You started to fight. But putting on that sweater for the first time, take us back to that game. I mean, was there nervous energy from either one of you or you felt, I, I'm ready to just jump right in and be myself? Just excitement. Just so excited to be part of this. Excited to be playing meaningful games. Um, you know, it was a big one too. Uh, obviously, you know, where, where we were at, um, you know, against um, obviously another team that was you know, hunting for a wild card spot. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was pretty funny, like, Having the ceremony of yeah. that 04 Cup team and right. then Torts gets Torts booted in the first exactly. period. Like of all the games. So yeah, I mean, obviously the the power play came off hot and it was nice to get a early one and then you know you just go from there. You just you're just feeling it, right? So everybody, you can tell in the locker room too before the game that um, you know everybody was excited, ready to go, and it was a big one. It was Saturday night too, like so. And then Dumbs drops the gloves, like boys are loving it. Like this guy's flew in game day, drops the gloves against. Against awesome. Kutiri, yeah, it was great. It was just end up happening uh, really well, and um, yeah, I was just say excitement for sure before the game. For so I wanted to ask you because doing some research um, about you know you being raised by Haitian immigrants, your dad and your uncle played Canadian football. Your uncle won the Grey Cup in '98 with the Stampeders. 
was hockey always in the cards or why not football if both your dad and your uncle were just where they were pros? Hold on, I gotta say first. <laughs> Stampeders. Oh my god. Oh, There's, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Saskatchewan Rough Rider fan. I know about that. I had to get the fact. You know. okay. okay. Get this guy a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, hockey was always in the cards. I mean, I know you so, were on skates at a young age, but I was just curious because football was in the lineage. So my dad told me um, <laughs> when he found out he was going to have a kid, he had a hockey stick on one hand and a tennis racket on the other hand. So if it was a boy, hockey. If it was a girl, tennis. So he already had that figured out, um, I guess, before it was born. So, okay. um, and, you know, my Canada, Montreal, obviously, um, you know, you just learn how to skate at a young age. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. You just go out there and um, just loved it. And then I actually tried football because, you know, I'm coming from a football family. And I guess I would just loved hockey so much at the time that I was like, Nope, like don't want to do this. Yeah. Like, no, so you I got just, no ball skills. <laughs> this guy's a basketball. hockey player through and through. But I'm a wide receiver, though. Buds, I put the clamps on you. Uh, you cannot. Oh, Champ shit. Bailey out there. That's why I wear. That's why I wear two for it. on the field. Champ Bailey. Out of your I I I've seen this. There's no basketball. Basketball. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about football. But it's either I'm running either, routes, either. I'm running routes on you. Let's run this right now. Let's run this right here. I'm yeah, prime listen. time D hop, but <laughs> weren't the boys just <laughs> well, so Stammer? Stammer's got a good arm. He's yeah, QB for uh, yeah. The boys were just over at the Bucks facility, so if you need us to put you out on the field, I could definitely run routes or over two four any day. You guys are listening to this. The challenge is put out. Not happening any day. So why do you feel you both? I mean, obviously you're playing on on the top line right now like we were saying with Cooch and Pointer and these guys but why do you think your game has has meshed in so well with those guys I mean um I think partly because I knew them before too I think that always helps um just knowing Pointer and you know winning you know champ you know, a gold medal with him Cooch we were actually really really tight uh, when we were playing in junior um <clears throat> has he changed so I was say like junior like to now personality wise what have you seen? Because uh, no, you're, you're a unique kinda, perspective. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of same guy, like quiet, like locked in, doesn't say too much, and um, you know, I try to always get him going. I'll try to like chirp him a little bit because nobody really chirps no. Cooch, right? So, I, so I, like, even today, like he he shot in the chest. I'm like, nice chest, Cooch, eh? <laughs> like just one of those, like just keep him on his toes. Nice. But, yeah, oh, he's, he's only got 136 he, he, points. No, nah, he he loves it, and I <laughs> and, and I love when Cooch starts smiling, and he, it's good. It gets him going, but. Um, I would say, I mean, those those players are so special uh, just on their own. They've been lining up the league ever since they got in the league. And for myself, I'm just trying to use my speed and, and try, just try to get in open spaces. And I know the puck's coming right on my stick. So uh, for myself, I just try to play the right way, try to play defense um, and just do my part. And honestly, just, just kind of stay out the way most of the time. Let, their do, let them do their thing, be net front and... Um, and then obviously communication is huge because those guys see things that other guys don't. So I just try to, you know, be on, on be where I'm supposed to be at all times. And, sure. Um, you know, it's been clicking so far and I'm, I'm just, I just want to keep learning every day cause I, I do want this to work out. And, um, it's obviously very talented line I'm on right now and I don't want to take this opportunity for granted. And for you, Matt, I mean, um, I actually found a quote from one of your former coaches in the WHL, Don Hay, who praised you and said, about your game. He's a guy that can do all aspects of the game. He's a very dynamic player with or without the puck. Yes, he can lay a good body check, but he can also score the overtime winning goal. Is that a good description of you feel of your game as well? I mean, that's going back a little way. I mean, yeah, that's, date, no, <laughs> uh, that's yeah, we're dating ourselves a little, but um, no, it's just, uh, yeah, just try to be a gamer and help in whatever, whatever capacity is, is needed at that time. Right. Um, you know, and I, I feel like my skills and stuff, like when I first came in the league, I I didn't play any defense, you know, like I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure it's a night and day from what I'm at now, sure. but you learn that over the course of a career and um, I'm sure I was trying to rush the puck and go end to end every single time and, you know, like you, you learn that stuff and learn how you can be more consistent. So that's just what I'm trying to focus on, be as consistent as uh, possible for these guys like we have so much skill up front it's it's silly so like for me to go up and want to do that and take the take the rock out of those guys hands like no I need to be advancing this I need to I need to be really sound defensively I need to create that you know that grittiness and and, and you know want to be in those situations where I'm battling and, and, and blocking stuff and 
uh, and then just advance the puck and join when I can. And, um, you know, hopefully that, that allows everything to, you know, fall into place. Dubs, one part of your game that I've always been very jealous of, but I admire a ton, and it probably started, like, I met Dumbs when he, I think you were 16, 17 years old. We were working out at the same place. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's a young kid and he's cup and coming. We hear a lot about him and we're sitting there and he's working out and we're like talking about, about Matt and, and, and his game. And we're pulling up on YouTube these clips of him and these open ice checks and just destroying kids. Yeah, right. Destroying kids and then watching him progress and coming to the NHL and then still being able to do it. And, and I don't know if people really realize that. It's a, it's a skill. It's a timing. And you have to have so many things go right to make those checks. And, and you have a, a knack for it, a real ability to do it. And it's one of the things about your game that I've always been very, 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 like, just in awe of. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, it's probably because I was, I've said this before, but I was this size when I was 16 too, you know, like I, I just, grew quicker than everyone else so like 14 13 when we started hitting like i was just using that to my advantage like, I, I, I encourage people to go on youtube and, and watch, watch them it. <laughs> it's just crushing people like, like, like laying them out like vertical it was unbelievable it's a skill though like you said i mean it's part of the game we heard that from halpy on our on our show last week is to find a, a specific skill set and hone in on that and become the very best at it and yeah, I mean, well, he's got many, many skill sets, but that was the one, the one that, that is very unique to you, for yeah. me, you know, because I, I realize how hard it is. For sure. You know, it's one of those things where if I could get you by the boards, you know, I could get you, but in the open ice, it's a much, much Different tougher. Situation. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know, I like how these guys move too. Like it's, uh, you're, when you're going at a guy like that and they're going 100 miles an hour, you know, these skill guys, like they can get out of anything. So, um, yeah, you kind of got to, you gotta have the balls. You gotta tote the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Do it because you, know, you could get. Oh, it's gonna can, hurt. Yeah, you know, you it might not necessarily work out. Um, but if you have the right timing, because you know, if you miss, you're out of the play. You know, oh, yeah. they're going back the other way. Sure, so. sure, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and you should like. I've picked some of the wrong guys to hit too. <laughs> you know, some big boys. You know, like so. You you gotta just find the the right uh, timing and the right opportunity and just kind of commit to it. Um. Yeah, just always been something that's kind of been been a part of my game. Keep it up, man. We love to see it. You have quite the fashion sense. I've noticed. I went a little deep into your IG account and was looking at some of those suits. I mean, I think he's got. I mean, Stammer and Hetty by far. I think on our team are probably two of the the most dressed or the nicest dressed. I mean, especially. Oh, I'm sure Sergey wants to be thrown in there somewhere. I mean, Sergey's in there too. I mean, we've got some good looking dressed guys, but I feel like your suit Let's game just exclude Pointer. You know, yeah, Pointer and Cooch. Cooch doesn't even wear a tie. I mean, the Cooch like walks you in. You can with have the, him talk about it, but I think you should have a dump of talk, <laughs> talk about, about it. this. You know, can yeah. you comment on Duke style? Yes. Please. Oh man, I think, I, 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 I think it is, it's just it's, you just there it is. you can't take Montreal out of this man. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's coming with a three piece, yeah. like yo, know, chill. It's hot out here, you bro. know. But, and so dry cleaning rule because we've asked Paulie and these guys because I mean. I, I mean, as a fan, you wonder that, right? You guys, most of them live right across the street on Harbor Island, right? So you're literally getting suited up to get in your car to literally drive five minutes to the arena, right? To get into the stadium, take it off and get in your gear to put it back on and go home. So what is your dry cleaning uh, mark benchmark of when you know I got to take this shirt or this suit to the dry cleaners. You might not want to know the answer. <laughs> 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 that, that, right now. <laughs> that thing hasn't seen the cleaners. Oh, oh here I mean, you've heard a multitude of answers as to like how many times they can get out of a suit. So I'm oh, curious yours. Let's be real here. Give us bad. the real. It's Is it bad. over four? Not even. Or are you okay. just straight baller? You just wear a suit once and just throw in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not Henrik Lundqvist, but no. <laughs> no, I probably like dry like dry clean once a year to be honest. Oh like it's God. so bad. Okay. So well, bad. Day, you know, you're really only wearing it for a few minutes at a time. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the road, so, it's a different story. And I have right? a lot of shirts, a lot of suits, so okay. it's like you know. Okay. You're getting the real here on the <laughs> the real. All right, guys, listen, again, I know we, we could probably talk to you guys for hours, but again, we know you've had a very busy day. So we always wrap up uh, our segments with a segment we call uh, Factor Fiction, powered by our friends at Highlight IPA. These are literally 
either true or not true statements. There might be a detail or two that might be tweaks trying to throw you off, <laughs> but for the most part, they're either true or not true statements. So I will go first. Uh, Mr. Duclair, in 2011, while with the Quebec Midget AAA Hockey League, you were awarded the Mario Lemieux Trophy for the league's top 15-year-old prospect. Fact or fiction? Fact. There we it's go. Pretty awesome. Yeah. What, so talk to us. I mean, that trophy, is that just for that age group, or was it different age groups that were in that specific? It was like top rookie, right? <clears throat> I don't know. It's a top for you were the league's top 15-year-old prospect. Okay, yeah. So there uh, we go. I mean, I was playing on a really good team. I had Jonathan Jure and Michael Matheson on the team. Okay. And then a bunch of guys that were really good junior players. So, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a really good team. We won it all and everything. But, yeah, it was a really good year. Um, yeah. Okay. Sweet. All right, Matt, got one for you. You and Hayden Fleury, you guys share a special connection. You guys have matching tattoos. Is this true? Fact or fiction? Um. Tattoos for a friend. Yeah, it's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah, a fact. For and a friend? That, yeah, he passed away mm. um, when we were in junior, actually. Yeah. So you got it together, yeah. or you guys, separate time, but said this? Sef is separate time, both both memorial pieces for uh, for Kale. Did you go to the same artist? Uh, no, we did not. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. That's really cool. Really cool. I, I, I thought that was really neat. All right, this is for both of you guys. Fact or fiction, you know what Gasparilla is. <laughs> their faces they have no clue do you do you have an idea have you heard of it before say that again do you know what gasparilla is gasparilla it's a it has something to do with our city it's okay if you don't know because we i mean we want to we, teach got, you. we got nothing okay yeah. so, so gasparilla is he'll fill you is the biggest event uh, in our city it happens in january every year but it celebrates um jose gaspar in the invasion of tampa where Tampa is very piratey. If you guys haven't learned, uh, Buccaneers. But there's a lot of history with Jose Gaspar, and there's a big event that happens in our city where the pirates literally invade the city. The, the mayor turns over the key to the to the pirates, and then there's a huge, massive parade that goes along Bayshore Boulevard. Hundred thousand people, hundreds of thousands of people. So literally, the whole city shuts very few, down. Very few drunk people. <laughs> no, it's like it's Mardi Gras on steroids, to be honest with you. But literally, it's a really cool tradition to see. And that's when, if you drive on Bayshore, you see the Jose Gaspar pirate ship there. Well, that thing goes way out, and there's just this flotilla of thousands of boats that come up uh, into the channel, into downtown Tampa, and it's a whole big thing. So. Hopefully, you guys are here in January. We don't have a game, NHL. They always schedule a game on Gasparilla, which we do not understand why, because literally it's impossible to get around our city because there's hundreds of thousands of people on Bayshore Boulevard. But you guys, hopefully, at some point, will be able to experience it because it's unlike anything else in our country. Awesome. So Gasparilla, wanted to make yeah, sure they know. Uh, All right. Cool. All right, Dumps. So a little research on you. You're a notorious prankster. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Notorious prankster. So I want to know fact or fiction. Because you are such good friends with Duke, he has been immune to any of your pranks. Mm, fact or fiction? Um, I guess I haven't really, I haven't really done too much. Be careful. Yeah, uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I had I'm something sorry. cooking. Now, now I gotta come right back. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Thanks, Cole. Oh, <laughs> <Cole. laughs> you better watch your bag now. I'll show Cole. up for TV and my tie will be <laughs> cut in half. All right. Uh, fact or fiction. <laughs> uh, Duclair, fact or fiction, you and Drake have talked about a fashion collabo. <laughs> uh no that's fiction okay but, well, i did see a picture of you with drake yeah i met him out. yeah i didn't meet him uh after a show in montreal it okay. was like right before uh training camp it was uh max told me he he hooked it up so shout out to him but um yeah it was it was nice meeting me and that guy yeah. okay i was gonna say i mean your suit game i figured it's up there with uh with drizzy so all right well i got one for dumps again all right so, minnesota wild you guys uh had a game that's very famous in Minnesota. Is it, is it Hammerschlagen? Is that it? Yeah, Hammerschlagen. Schlagen? Yeah, so you are the Minnesota Wild all-time Hammerschlagen champion. Factor fiction. Ah, uh, that's that's definitely fiction. <laughs> I, I stink at that game. But to our fans, you know, don't what, know it what it is. What is it? Yeah, so it's like they get like a a piece of <laughs> it's like a, a log, tree, a log. Right? Like, a, like, like, a like stump. imagine this as a log. Yeah, okay, and, and so you have this nail, and you get to tap it, so it's just just in got it and then it comes around like we all yep. have the hammer and on your turn you have to lay the hammer flat down okay and 
and then you just get one hit. That's the first guy to bury the the um, the, th- the nail the nail flush along the wood. Okay. So like if you're, if you're nice, yeah, you're doing it at one time. But I mean, yeah, it would take me like four or five. <laughs> <laughs> if you and if you knock and if you knock it in like sideways too, so then you have to start like you have to yeah, get it. It needs flush. to be it needs to be flush. So you might even have to if you hit, knock it sideways the first time, you might have to restart this is like the most minnesota (laughs) sounding (laughs) game i've ever heard of but like you'll but you'll like go up north like where like uh zorbas Zorbas Zorbas. oh and there'll be like some old goat sitting around the the hammer slog and then he's just taking whoever any money you want 100 bucks 200 bucks doesn't matter play this guy it's just technique one 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 touching them like the obi like like it's nothing Love it. So yeah, there's. Uh, I guess now we have some good players out there. Okay, I didn't even know that existed. So thank you for bringing that one. All right, <laughs> and finally, the randomness, fact or fiction. This is for both of you, Dumba and Duclair. In your opinion, Nikita Kucherov is the clear front runner for the Hart Trophy this year. Yeah, because 100%. I mean, I mean, you guys see and see, hear the same thing as we do, and it just seems like, why is he not? Like, why is it all about McDavid? Why is it all about McKinnon? When you look at what truly an MVP and Hart Trophy stands for, obviously the points, but like what he has done for the team and being 51 points above the second best on the team, how is there any comparison? Yeah, I mean, um, just watching him play, um, watching the team progress. I mean, I would think like if Cooch isn't around, I don't think we're in this position. So uh, like you said, it's the most valuable person on your team. You know, I, I think the clear Insane. front runner, um, you know, for sure. It's not a biased answer either. It's no. just like straight fact. Right. No, and now that we've be been able to see it on a right, day to day, like yeah. I know how hard it was to play against Cooch, like and even even being out west. But it was me and Brody and, you know, trying to put the clamps on these guys, yeah, which yeah. is virtually impossible. Um, and now to like see it every day and just like how he works and like, it's just it's the way he moves, right? The way he moves, man. And I and I kind of I see I did this as he goes, but like you know that little rock he has in his skates when he's doing it, it's like he's like snake charming you. Yeah, you know you're like this, and then he's and then and then he's around you, and you're like, damn, <laughs> you know, like as if back and forth. You think he's going this way, this way, boom, and then he makes and then he makes a play, and you're like, damn, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. You know what play really sticks out to me the last couple of weeks is the one that he did from his knees where he passed it to like was it was it to you or was it the no, pointer, it was a pointer right, from his knees with crazy. three guys around like who, like it's on it's the, the beautiful thing about watching lightning hockey is that every night you're gonna watch you're gonna watch a, a Kucherov highlight that you're like just what just happened know, right wow unbelievable guys listen uh we know again we've taken enough of your time today yeah. uh, with team photos and you got a boat ride and a bunch of stuff to do but uh we're we're so thankful that you both have been a spark that our team has really needed here to kind of propel us into the playoffs and uh we hope uh by the end of this run you both are uh, hoisting lord stanley here on our home ice it would be nothing better us too man. Us awesome too. stuff man well, thank listen you. thank you both uh anthony duclair matthew dumba for joining us here on the bolts block party powered by our friends at highlight ipa and we will be back next week with a live show which uh, you guys will find out about that very soon but thank you to both of these gentlemen for joining us and we will see you guys next week from the coach from the coach <laughs>